Hi, I'm Cheryl Cheadle. I work for the Oklahoma Conservation Commission in the Blue Thumb Water Quality Education Program. I'm the volunteer coordinator. I am here at West Elm Creek. And West Elm Creek is south of I-40, west of Shawnee, kind of in the Cleveland County, Oklahoma County area. I'm here with uh, Rebecca Bond, the Blue Thumb Director, and she's doing the video. And, and I'm here basically to say welcome to the Blue Thumb Fish Identification video that you're about to watch. Uh, you're already tuned in. And we thought, Rebecca and I thought, well, a good way to do a fish ID introduction is to go out and say hello to a few of the fish that actually live in West Elm Creek. And so we do have a few fish. I've been looking at them. Let me see what I can pull up right here. We've been looking at the fish in the creek, getting some little idea of what's living here. But I already had some idea because I've been on the Blue Thumb website, bluethumbok.com, and we have some volunteer data interpretation. So I looked at the fish list for West Elm Creek, and like right here, there's a little, I believe this is a small red shiner. And I had a red shiner I, I identified a while ago. I had a sand shiner I identified a while ago. I had a long ear sunfish. Uh, I think I had um, a sucker mouth minnow. So Rebecca and I have been here for a few minutes looking at the fish, just getting a feel for this creek again because it's a good day to be out doing that. So you are going to get to watch a video where Kim Shaw and Candace Miller, Blue Thumb staff members, are going to give you lots of pointers and clue you in on fish identification. And to kind of kick it off, I, I'm, I'm the introduction, and I'm also going to mention the phrase fish assemblages, which means also fish communities. What fish live where? Um, what, what would we expect to find here? Well, I would Google those fish lists I just mentioned. Um, and then we pull the same, and we actually see what fish live here. We try to exhaust lots of different habitats. You can hear a little bit of running water. We're gonna be trying to catch fish that live in the running water. We're gonna look for some pools because that's another place fish are gonna be living. We're gonna check out those pools and that you might see bigger fish in the pools because that's a bigger body of water. We're gonna be looking at these undercut banks and what, what fish are gonna live along the vegetation along the stream. So the fish community is gonna be an, it, different for each creek for each ecoregion in the state. And, and a fish collection will tell us about that community. There are some fish that I might find in Northeast Oklahoma, they're not gonna be here. There are some fish that might be in Southwest Oklahoma and they're not gonna be here. But you've got some fish, like a yellow bullhead catfish, like a long ear sunfish, uh, maybe a stone roller. Those fish might be in lots of different places. But we're, we're going to find some that are going to like Western Oklahoma better, or going to like Eastern Oklahoma better, or the Northeast, the Southeast. But the idea is, this is just to get you thinking about what fish are we going to find where? How many species do we expect to find? And in West Elm Creek, I counted the species from the most recent fish collection. I think we had about 15. The, the fish collection from 2015 was about, about I think, 18. Don't quote me, go look it up yourself. But anyway, welcome to Fish ID. Thank you for, for tuning in with Blue Thumb. And keep in mind that once we get past a pandemic, we'll come out to a creek with you and we'll do this with fish in the flesh, or should I say in the scale. I am Kim Shaw. I'm the Quality Assurance Officer for the Blue Thumb Program. And usually I've been, the past several years, I've been working with a college about fish ID. It's part of their uh, school program for that class. And since we can't really meet uh, due to COVID and stuff like this, then perhaps this way more people will get this knowledge. Um, we were, are deciding to take these, film these in various segments. So um, what I'm going to start out with is teaching and explaining about the external anatomy of fish, the different fins and lateral lines and things that uh, we as field people for Blue Thumb uh, use to identify fish in the field. Um, other parts of the fish we really can't use in the field like uh, internal organs and things like that. So we, as far as our fish ID, we just uh, really look at what the outside of the fish has to offer for us.
So when blue thumb, when we are identifying fish out in the field, we are looking at the outside characteristics of it. So the outside of the fish anatomy, like the different fins, the lateral lines, such like that. Um, because we're doing this pretty quickly and we're not out there dissecting fish to really look at their gill rakers and really small things that we might need microscopes and stuff for. So it's kind of a quick and dirty. Um, so I'm going to, uh, as far as fish identification, I'm going to be talking about like things like the caudal fin and adipose fin. So we are going to start out with what those things are. So I have a diagram here and um, we will talk about those specific terms for the fish. So the top photo is of a catfish and um, catfishes are pretty easy to identify so we will start there. Uh, first of all, a lot of people call them whiskers. Uh, more technically, we call them barbels. And especially on the bullheads, we are really going to look at the color of the chin barbels. Are they yellow or colorless, or are they dark pigmented? Uh, also, on the catfish, we will definitely look at the adipose fin. And on the catfishes, the adipose fin is called a free adipose fin. That is going to differ from the mad toms, which are also catfishes, but a lot smaller. That is a connected adipose fin. So the catfishes are all going to have a free adipose fin. And also talking about catfishes, we are really going to look at the caudal fin, that tail fin. So on this diagram here, it is a forked caudal fin. And other catfishes will have a square or rounded caudal fin. So those are pretty much kind of the specific characteristics, outside characteristics of the catfishes. Uh, so we will go down to the bottom diagram and this is going to be helpful for all of the other fish that we will look at and talk about. Uh, different things on here, we will certainly look at sizes of mouths, where is, especially on the basses, where is the back hinge of the jaw in accordance to the eye. Is it behind the eye? Is it kind of in the middle of the eye? Um, that will help to determine on some of our different fishes. We will certainly look at dorsal fins, especially with the basses as well. You have the spinous dorsal, that's going to be the sharp pointy part, and the back part of the dorsal is going to be the soft dorsal. Uh, we will definitely be counting dorsal spines for the crappie. Um, We'll kind of look at the caudal fins a little bit. Um, we will definitely look at the lateral line, the lateral line versus the lateral band. Um, I kind of hate how they have this one labeled because the lateral line is more so like up in the top photo with the catfish and the lateral band is actually the pigmented dark part. Um, we also look at anal fins. Uh, three spines on the anal fin is going to be uh, characterizing various sunfishes. Um, oh, we'll certainly look at pectoral fish or pectoral fins with the sunfishes. Um, we will look at the operculum ear, ear flap. The operculum is the gill cover. We will look at the different sizes of that. So pretty much everything that's listed on here are things that we will be looking at. Um, the whole purpose of why we study the real live dead pickled fish is because it takes color out of the equation. You can go out to different creeks and especially like long ear sunfishes, they can be all colors of the rainbow. Just kind of depends on their habitat kind of the seasonality, the coolness or warmness of the water, what they're eating, such like that. Um, so some of them can be more red, some can be more blue, some can be more purplish. Um, but we studied the real live dead fish because the pigment is always going to be there whether they're alive or dead. So like referring back to the lateral band, that pigment will be there even in their death. 
So um, it just really makes you look at the outside anatomy of the fishes and uh, takes the color out of the equation. Okay, so we will start with the catfish because the catfish, there's not that many of them in the catfish family and they're pretty easy to identify in general. So we'll start with the easy ones and get to, onto some harder ones. Uh, once you identify that it is a catfish, catfish are going to have very, very small scales so it feels like human skin. Um, they just have the different barbels, so barbels, not whiskers. They're going to have chin barbels, um, side of mouth barbels, and barbels on top of their head. So pretty much general catfishes, okay? Once we figure out that it's a catfish, then we're going to look at the caudal fin. That's the tail fin here. So if it's forked like this, just kind of goes in and V's back out. If it's forked, it's going to be a blue catfish or channel catfish. Versus if it's rounded or square tail, this one's been used for education a lot, so it's kind of a little bit frayed. But if it's uh, square or rounded, then it's going to be um, about three other cat different catfishes. So once we identify that it's a forked tail, like I said, it's going to be a blue catfish or channel catfish. Uh, blue catfishes are a lot bigger fish. They like a lot bigger habitat, bigger water, bigger lakes, bigger rivers. Uh, so we, as far as with blue thumb, we uh, fish on weightable streams. So we, I don't know if I've really ever, I think maybe once came across a blue catfish. But um, blue catfishes, they can swim upstream into creeks, um, not a problem at all. So we're going to look at the anal fin. And this anal fin is curved or rounded. So I just kind of think of a C as a rounded shape. The name of the channel catfish starts with a C, so just kind of a rounded or curved anal fin. The blue catfish is going to have a uh, very right angled anal fin. So it will come down here like this, and then immediately 90 degrees come up like that, okay? Um, so I just have different nuances, different sayings to even help me out after all these years, C for channel for the anal fin. Uh, some of the uh, young adolescents, really young, Channel catfishes can have pigmented uh, dots, freckles on them. Uh, you really only see that when they're pretty young. There's kind of another characteristic. Okay, so now we'll get back to the square or rounded caudal fin catfishes. And that can be a flathead or a yellow or black bullhead. So about three different ones. So then uh, once we figure out that it's a square or rounded, we are going to look at the face. And this is a very rounded face of this catfish. The flat head is going to be really, really flat. The whole head, the lips, it looks like a, a duckbill platypus. Uh, on a flat head catfish, the bottom jaw is going to outhang the upper jaw. And uh, they just are very distinctive. You look at the face and it's like, ah, that's what she was talking about. So uh, this is going to be one of the bullheads. Then you flip it over and you look at the chin barbels. And these are going to be yellow or colorless, lacking pigment. So that means it's going to be a yellow bullhead. If it was a black bullhead catfish, these chin barbels would be as dark pigmented as these upper head barbels. So pretty easy, you look at the chin barbels. Are they yellow or colorless? Then it's a yellow bullhead. If they're dark, then it's going to be a black bullhead. Okay, so now we'll get into the big family called the Centarchidae family. Centarchidae family is going to include all your basses, your crappies, and the fish that have sunfish in their name. Okay, uh, fish that uh, people call sun or call perch is actually a sunfish. Perch is actually another family of fish that uh, includes walleye, sogeye, and the very small fish called darters. So sunfish are within the Centricidae family. 
perch is actually a name of a family of fish. Okay, so uh, we'll start off with our three most common bass that we find uh, on our Blue Thumb Creek sites in Oklahoma. Not to being said that there are not other basses, but these are the three most common ones that we come in contact with. Um, so bass in general are going to have a hinged jaw. Let's see if I can get this little guy's mouth to speak to us. Just going to have a hinged jaw. And um, I think most people in general just kind of know what a bass kind of looks like. Um, we look at the, dors the dorsal fins a lot. We look at uh, the lateral band, if we have it or not, and all sorts of stuff. So we have two distinct fins. The spinous dorsal is in front, the soft dorsal is in back. And as far as for the largemouth bass, it has a very deep notch where it looks like two distinct fins. The largemouth bass is also going to have a large hinged jaw. So if you can kind of zoom in, but the back hinge of the fish jaw line is going to be back behind that eye. So even on this kind of smaller fish, that back hinge is going to be back behind the eye. So large mouth bass, large fish just means a large mouth. So a little bit kind of similar fish is going to be the spotted bass. So just kind of to show you on the spotted bass, the dorsal fins look almost like one fin. So this is what we call shallow notched. The, do the, the spinous dorsal goes right on in to the soft dorsal, okay? You can't really see the back um, like you did on the largemouth bass. The spotted bass is going to have kind of a, a medium mouth um, the hinge of the jaw is going to be kind of in the middle of the eye or towards the back end of the eye, but it will not extend past the eye like the largemouth bass. But if you haven't already seen, um, we teach fish this way with dead fish because pigment is very different than color. So this fish is pigmented, it's not colored, okay? Um, so pigments will always stay, the colors will fade, and they can be all sorts of colors, but pigments are always here. So if you haven't already noticed, the pigments are very, very different than on the largemouth bass, okay? The spotted bass has a very spotted, a regularly spotted uh, belly, um, kind of the ventral side, the belly side is very spotty and pretty evenly spotted. It will have a lateral band that's different than the lateral line. The band is the pigmented part, and it will be um, pretty splotchy, but it will be a pretty complete band as well. Uh, those are about the characteristics of the spotted bass. Our last one that I have here today is, let me show you the better side, is the uh, smallmouth bass. And um, we don't come across these too much. Um, yeah, but uh, the jaw is going to be about the middle of the eye, so small mouth bass, it's going to follow its name, it's going to have a smaller mouth. The dorsal fins are going to be pretty much like the uh, spotted bass, what we call shallow, no shallow notched. The spinous dorsal in front will lead pretty much directly into the soft dorsal in the back there. So it almost looks like the same fin, okay? And um, this one, uh, the pigments, the colors, the pigments are going to be pretty uh, earthy toned and what we call mottled in color, just kind of uh, grays, greens, uh, browns in color. So very different than the largemouth bass, um, it will kind of have colorization and stuff like that too, but the largemouth will definitely have a lateral band as well, but it will be a lot more complete than the small mouth, than the spotted, get all these facing the right way. Spotted's gonna be a little bit more spotty, 
the lateral band on the large mouth is going to be very complete put together. So there's the three most common basses in Oklahoma. Okay, so now I'll get into some of the sunfishes within the, the Centricidae family. So these actually have sunfish in their name. These are the fish that people tend to the, usually call perch, whereas I said perch is actually going to be a family of different fish. So these are sunfish. So there's lots of sunfishes in Oklahoma. I'm not even gonna guess because I don't wanna get it wrong. But um, I got kind of the three most uh, common ones out right. here because they're pretty um, long from ventral to dorsal. They're pretty flat, slab-sided. Um, just kind of shaped like a plate. Um, these will also have a hinge jaw, pretty similar to the bass as well. But we don't really look at the jaw line on these fish. Um, so once you kind of figure out that it is a sunfish, you should definitely look at the soft dorsal back here. Does it have a spot or does it not have a spot? This will definitely cut your uh, options down as to what fish it is. If it has a spot, it's going to be two fish. If it does not have a spot, it can be a lot more other fish. But if it has a spot, then the next thing we're going to look at is, let me show you this pectoral fin. This one's less, well, I guess that one's cut up too. Um, so then we look at the pectoral fin. This one is going to be short and rounded. Sorry, I've used this a lot for education, so the rays are really coming apart. But trust me, it would be rounded in real life. So it's short and rounded. It does not, it barely even comes up to the eye. So short and rounded pectoral fin, a black dot in the soft dorsal. Um, these, this is a green sunfish. Um, in general, they're going to be kind of more shaped like a bass. Um, these fish sizes are not the same, I'm sorry. But um, if you can kind of see that this top fish, the green sunfish is a little bit more torpedo shape, whereas this bottom fish is more uh, fat from ventral belly to dorsal to back. Um, so the green sunfish is going to be shaped more like the bass. It's also going to have a really huge mouth. Sorry, they're dead. Anyways, um, ugh, there we go. <laughs> so actually my whole thumb would fit in that mouth. So I use form follows function a lot. So a big mouth means it's going to be eating big things, okay? If it's uh, shaped, kind of torpedoed shape, it means it's going to be a fast swimmer. Uh, depending on where the fins are, it's going to say if they're um, immediately fast fish or if they can keep that, uh, cruise control speed on for a longer time or just be a dart um, out with that. So form follows function, big mouth, green sunfish, that's the top one. Versus the bottom one here is a bluegill sunfish. It will also, this one's faint, but it will also have a black dot in the soft dorsal here, okay? The pectoral fin is very long and pointed and it goes up past the head okay very long point of pectoral fin it will have bars pigmented bars because you can still see it so that means it's a pigment it's not really colored it will have bars radiating up and down um, in real life it will be kind of blue green bars okay and um, this is a bluegill sunfish so black dot in the soft dorsal, long point of pectoral fin that goes up past the head and the bars. It's going to be a bluegill. The, sorry, I'll go back to the green real quick. The green is going to be pretty green brown modeled in color. Sorry about that in real life. Okay, then we will get into a long ear sunfish, very, very common. This is definitely where we say pigment is better to study and identify the fish as opposed to color. Long ear sunfishes, they can be all colors of the rainbow. I've seen them more purple, more bluish, more reddish. Um, it just depends on their habitat and what they're eating and such like that. But uh, this is definitely a very classic long ear sunfish. You look at the opercle ear flap. 
So it is going to be a lot longer and extended than any of these fish. See that little kind of dark spot and the purple ear flap of the bluegill? It barely even has a extension of the flap. Whereas the long ear, I mean, it's just long ear. Even compared to the green, the green has a little bit more than the bluegill, but the long ear just really has it. But sometimes, sometimes the long ear can be a lot shorter, but uh, you just gotta look at the other characteristics. There is not going to be a black dot in the soft dorsal. This is gonna have a pretty smaller mouth, eating bugs, small things. So those are the three most common sunfishes that we find in Oklahoma. Okay, so we will get into uh, the crappie. And so these are still within the Centricidae family, which include the bass, the sunfish, and the crappie. So um, we pretty much have two common ones in Oklahoma, the white crappie and the black crappie. So these are going to, um, their body plans and stuff are kind of a mix of a bass and a sunfish. Uh, they will have the hinged jaw just like the bass and the other sunfish do, but they are going to kind of be a little bit more plate-like um, body plan, more like the sunfish. So they're kind of in between a bass and a um, sunfish. Uh, so things that we look for in the crappie is, uh, again, we're, we can still talk about the pigment because the pigment's gonna be here, the colors might not be there. Uh, so I just think of white, so W, so these are going to have kind of little bit of W's or bars for the white crappie, okay? Um, this will kind of be um, uh, silvery off white body color and then darker markings as far as the lines, the bars, the pigmented lines that we can see here. But to really distinguish it is you count the spines on the spinous dorsal. The white crappie in general is a smaller fish, so they're going to have less spines. So white crappie is going to have five to six dorsal spines. The black crappie is going to be a bigger fish. It's going to have more, seven to eight. So white crappie has five to six spines. So you got one, two, three, four, five. We have six. Let me just see that. Yep, we got six dorsal spines on this. So we have a white crappie here. Just the hinge jaw, the bars up and down, five to six dorsal spines versus the black crappie. So just to tell you about in real life colors, this is going to be a lot darker fish. You can see it has a lot more pigment to it than the white crappie. It will be very mottled in color, um, just earth tones, grays, browns, greens um, will be the fish. So this is a black crappie. It should have seven to eight spines, dorsal spines. One, two, three, four, five six and seven. So we have seven dorsal spines, so this is going to be a black crappie. Okay, so a pan full of fish this time. We are talking about suckers. So suckers in general, their uh, mouth is going to be on their ventral side. That means their belly side. Um, so they are just like your uh, algae eaters in your fish tank, their lips are on their bottom. So that means again, form follows function. They're going to be bottom eating fish. Um, there's, I don't know how many different types of suckers, but there's going to be a lot. Uh, I got some of the more common ones and there's still a couple more that we might see out there as well, besides what I have in the tray here. But, um, so I just kind of look at their lips and see if they are warty, bumpy, or if they are grooved, okay? Um, if they're warty, bumpy, it's going to narrow it down to two fish, a northern hog sucker and a white sucker. If they are grooved, that's going to be a lot of other different fish. Um, this is a red horse, and there are at least four different kind of red horse species. Um, they are hard to identify in the field um, to, and even with the various uh, red horse species, they can, their different numbers kind of bleed in one into, into the other. Um, but things that we do as far as uh, helping to identify a red horse species is to uh, count 
the individual scales that the lateral line crosses through. So yeah, imagine doing this on a live fish that's flopping around. You get like almost done with it and then it flops and then you are lost your count of where you were. It's great fun. Um, and then you're going to count the various rays on the pelvic fin. And the numbers are going to matter. But like I said, sometimes the golden, the black, and the river red horses kind of all go into each other. But even if you can tell that it's a red horse, that's pretty good going. But uh, red horses are just definitely going to be a rounded bodied fish. And that's kind of the general for the red horse. Um, also another fish that's going to have grooved lips is going to be a spotted sucker. Now this one, it's, it's even hard for me to see from right here, but um, a spotted sucker is going to be very distinctive in the field. It's going to have a black spot on every single scale on the fish, okay? So once you see it has a mouth on the bottom of the fish and a black dot in every single scale on the fish, you can just say it's a spotted sucker. Good going. So those are pretty easy. The next one I have up is a northern hog sucker. This is just another one that's very distinctive. You look at that head functionality on there. That's just mega weird. I think it kind of looks like an old Hoover vacuum cleaner. Just kind of comes down to a little bit of a Y uh, from the eyes to the snout. The lips on here definitely will be warty, bumpy lips. Um, it will have these dark pigmented what we call saddles going from one side of the fish over the back to the other side. Um, otherwise just kind of a general earth tones modeled in color. But just that head and the warty lips says it's a northern hog sucker. And then these last two suckers, they look very, very similar, but they are two different fish. They are distinctive. So this top one is a river carp sucker. And this bottom one is a smallmouth buffalo. There's also a largemouth buffalo, just means it has a really lot big larger mouth, but the characteristics of the fish are the same. Uh, so both of these fish are going to have uh, pretty thin, but still grooved lips. Uh, in real life, this smallmouth buffalo will have a really dark eye. So it doesn't come out that way when it's dead, but in real life, it will be very distinctive, very dark eye. In real life, this river carp sucker will have more like a doll eye. Okay, you can, it has a, you can really see like a, an iris and a, a clearer dot in the center um, and the more darker coloring on the outside. Um, it looks like pretty much like a doll's eye. Kind of more so like the uh, smallmouth buffalo down there is really what it looks like for the river carp sucker in real life. Um, in real life, the Smallmouth buffalo will be very olive colored and the river carp sucker will be more um, a little bit more flashy, a little bit more silvery. Um, uh, the more distinguishable characteristics is if you look at the sub opercle ear bone, um, that's going to be the bottom part of kind of the gill plate. Uh, if you look at that and they are kind of hard to distinguish. Sorry, I'm just looking here. Um, but uh, the smallmouth buffalo, I just think of a buffalo and a moon outside, uh, everything being outside. The subopercle ear bone is going to be uh, a half moon shaped. So the outside of the uh, gill plate here is going to be very rounded. Whereas the subopercle ear bone of the river carp sucker, it's gonna have a more of an angle to it, not really a 90 degree, but there's actually going to be a little bit of an angle to it. So that might be really hard to see, but once you kind of get it in your brain, it's like, oh, yep, I see it now. Also, another distinguishing feature is the river carp sucker is going to have a little bit of a nubbin or a nipple on the bottom lip there versus the smallmouth buffalo does not have that. So that's kind of another distinguishing feature River carp sucker has the nubbin on the bottom lip. The smallmouth buffalo does not. Okay, just to show you a little bit about uh, true minnows, 
true minnows, um, they're pomitheles, and there's three of them. There's a blunt nose, a bullhead, and a fathead. Personally, I don't know the difference between them, especially in the field. You really do have to dissect them, look at their uh, intestinal stomach lining, and see if it's a black or a silver. Um, some of them, especially in their breeding colors, they potentially can be identified in the field, but um, pretty much I don't know the difference. So we would jug all these and let our fish expert identify them. But I can know that it is going to be one of the three Pomitheles brothers, because if you look at the scales on the back of the head, they are extremely small and clustered together. Unlike the scales on the rest of the body, that are going to be a lot more uh, evenly spaced, evenly sized, stuff like that. So those small clustered scales on the top of the head, uh, dorsal head part of the fish are going to narrow it down to one of three species. Okay, I got two more small fish here for you, but um, people do kind of get them mixed up together. Um, they kind of are similar, but they are very different. So we have a central stone roller versus a sucker mouth minnow. Both are going to be um, kind of suckers. Um, their mouths are on the bottom, so that means they are bottom feeding fish. Your central stone roller here is going to be your classic algae eater out of your fish tank. Um, your sucker mouth minnow is going to be eating some small bugs. So a little bit more about the central stone roller. Since the central stone rollers do eat algae, they have a very long uh, intestinal track lining track, and um, their bellies will be very, very soft and mushy because they are eating soft, mushy algae. Uh, in real life colors, they will have a uh, top shimmery color, and kind of if you're, um, especially in rocky areas, uh, you might see kind of fish kind of swimming that way, and you might see shim some shimmering. Uh, most likely that's probably going to be your central stone roller. Um, there's going to be their mouths are a uh, horseshoe shaped mouth on the very bottom of the fish. It has a hard cartilaginous bottom jaw or lip, however you want to say it, and they're going to use that to scrape the algae off the rocks and eat it versus the sucker mouth minnow has a pretty similar mouth shape but the body plan is very different it is going to be a pretty hard bodied fish it will have you can tell by the pigments on here it will have a very distinct lateral band that is the color pigmented part the upper scales will be darkly outlined um, kind of an olive color stuff like that um, but it's just a really harder body than the soft belly of the central stone roller. Okay, here's a, uh, another fish. This is the common carp. Um, it does come from outside of the US, um, not native. It is kind of destructive, um, if you want to call it that, to habitat and such. Uh, it will go, go out with its caudal fin and just really uh, disturb the sediments and make the water really mucky and dark. And as you know, the darker the water, the less oxygen that can be held in that water, especially when it's sunny. Um, but the common carp is also another fish that is going to have barbels, but it is not a catfish, okay? I don't know if you can see kind of here, those bigger barbels kind of on the bottom jaw. It will also have really small barbels on the upper jaw as well, but it is not a catfish. And the scales on the fish will be uh, pretty diamond shaped. As you can see, there is pigment on this fish. Um, the scales will be outlined in a dark color, kind of diamond shaped. It will have a pretty long dorsal fin, very different than a lot of other fish here. Um, kind of similar to a uh, freshwater drum, but pretty much um, half of the back is a dorsal fin. So we have some interesting fish in Oklahoma as well. The shads are actually in the herring family. So we do have herring fish in Oklahoma, who would have thought? Um, they look pretty much the same. You're saying she has two of the same fish in here, but they are different. This one, the bigger one's going to be a gizzard shad. 
The smaller one over here is going to be a thread fin shad. So they both will have the dark uh, dorsal side of the fish. They both will have that uh, freckle or dot behind the gill plate. Um, the more distinguishing features, uh, pretty much in general, the gizzard shad here is going to be a lot bigger th fish than the threadfin. That's actually a very large threadfin shad. Usually they're going to be pretty small. So if you see a shad and it's already this size, most likely it's going to be a gizzard shad. But to be certain with it, if you, um, again, uh, just my little diddly things that uh, keeps it straight in my mind, I just think of G, a downturned snout for the gizzard shad. If you draw your finger along the snout, you are not catching that bottom jaw. That snout, that upper snout is curving down and covering that bottom jaw. So just think of G and that. It will have a, both of these will have a, let's see if I can get it separated, a uh, thin filament from the dorsal fin. Here's what I'm referring to. And the gizzard shad is going to cut off about halfway into the caudal peduncle. The thread fin is going to go all the way down into the caudal fin itself. So the gizzard shad is going to be a little bit shorter on that uh, dorsal fin filament. So this is the gizzard shad. Let me show you some different characteristics of the thread fin. So the thread fin, you draw your finger down the snout and I am uh, getting caught, my finger's getting caught on that bottom jaw. So the thread fin bottom jaw of the fish outhangs, okay? Then you look at the dorsal filament and this one's cut off. This is a horrible education part of this, but honestly, this dorsal filament would go all the way and it would end about right here, about where the caudal fin starts from the body of the fish. So my apologies on that. You get what you get with educational fish. But like I said, this is actually going to be a pretty large thread fin shad. Overall, they're pretty small. So this here is a mosquito fish. It is native to Oklahoma. It is a live bearer when it uh, gives babies, they are live. This is going to be your classic guppy in a fish tank. They're pretty much the same thing. They are going to be, if you know what a guppy or the more classic guppies, there are different kind of guppies. But anyways, um, the kind of a uh, bluish, reddish, greenish kind of mottled colors. Um, their babies will come out alive and uh, they're pretty cool looking. Uh, they will eat mosquito larvae, so they are going to be surface feeders. So their back of their, again, form follows function. They have a very uh, straight and flat back. Their bottom jaw, yeah, I don't even know if you can see that, but their bottom jaw actually outhangs their upper jaw slightly. So a flat uh, back and an outhanging bottom jaw means that they're going to be feeding on things um, kind of slightly above them and on the surface of the water. On females that are pregnant, they will have a black dot back here um, in the soft belly portion. Just kind of means, you know, I'm married or I have babies. Uh, don't mess with me, that black dot back there. 